Is the Constitution like... This is a world This is a world premiere. This is a world Hey y'all, welcome to another Food for Thought. So, today's gonna be an interesting conversation because I think it's gonna be obviously a topic that's gonna be upsetting to some people. It's probably gonna be, people are gonna consider it divisive or whatever. And before I jump into this conversation about the Constitution, just happened to see a video um, by Nick Avocado Avocado. And um, actually, I watched a couple. Le yesterday, I watched one that was him from the Heart Attack. I think it's called like the Heart Attack Cafe. And they apparently have a 20,000 calorie sandwich. Um, and he was there. And one of the things about the features about this restaurant is that if you weigh over 350 pounds, you eat for free. Um, I don't know. You know, it just seems to be something to me that is part and parcel of what I see happening in society where things are fl flipped on their head. Now we encourage, we find ways to encourage people to abuse themselves, basically. And I don't want, this is not about, you know, fat shaming or anything. Like, come on, y'all. Y'all know that I'm not like, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not the skinny bitch. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm so, it's not like about um, body image, but. Uh, the idea that you're going to entice, you're going to encourage someone to, like, if someone's 325 pounds, you're going to encourage them to go that extra 25 pounds so that they can eat in your restaurant for free. Um, the vegan menu in this restaurant, by the way, is cigarettes, Lucky Strikes. So the, uh, the vegan option is smoking cigarettes because they apparently don't contain any animal products. So that's what I mean by this whole idea of turning morality on its head. Now, it's obvious to me that um, Nick Akato clearly is attention starved for whatever reason, um, just craves attention. And I'm not sure what happened. I don't want to psychoanalyze that person, but I, it's not the first, there are certain people, there have been conditions where individuals have elected to harm themselves and harm others for attention. There's a, there's a, a syndrome that, um, that uh, mothers get called uh, Munchausen by proxy, and this is a, a, where they will actually make their children sick so that they can get the attention from people for having a sick child, right? So it's not unheard of that we have conditions where people will harm themselves for the sake of attention. And I wouldn't be surprised, um, and I don't want to make it seem like I'm calling this out and I'm not trying to make it seem like this is something that this person deserves, but I wouldn't be surprised if we saw, you know, another headline in the Daily Mail recently saying, you know, vegan dies of heart attack. So that's how I feel about that. So, ah. Uh, Things have been happening. Um, there's been this, you know, there was recently a this shooting in Las Vegas, and for those who don't know about it, I'll include some links in the description box below. I don't want to make this about sensationalizing what happened in Las Vegas, but I do want to talk about the way this idea of politi politicization, um, making the idea, politicizing the what happened, and several people have said to me that I shouldn't assume that it was a political act. Um, it is hard not to assume that an action that was intended to draw so much attention, that was so carefully planned, did not have some type of political motivation, even if it was one that was not clearly articulated to the person who performed that action. Um, you know, the, th the same can be said of, you know, Nick Akato. When Nick Akato decides to stop being vegan and go back to consuming animal products, that, in, that ends up being a political action, even though that person's intentions were not to be political. Of course, there are going to be conversations about gun control. And of course, people who are nervous about having their guns taken away are going to resist any conversations about gun control. 
we can't consider it, you know, politicizing a mass shooting to talk about all of the ways that we might. Now, first of all, it is political in that we have to discuss the way we are going to govern the society in the aftermath of this tragedy, right? It's a, it's a public event. The, the, the government has to be involved. The government has to be involved in some way to ensure the safety of the general population after something like this takes place. So we're gonna have to think about all of the areas in which we can, wherein we can make adjustments to keep the public safe. So we might look at the way we hold public events. We might look at security at those public events. We might look at the way we allow people to, you know, bring certain types of items into hotel rooms, for example. If someone is bringing in bags of guns into a hotel, I think that we might, it might be fair to say those need to be checked. Right, those need to be placed somewhere where they're secure, and hotels should provide secure spaces for certain types of items that can be considered dangerous, right, or deadly. Because um, who knows, somebody could just, you know, the hotel room is not necessarily 100% secure. Anybody could break into that person's uh, room, and suddenly you have, you know, some kind of a nightmare. In this case, we definitely had some kind of a nightmare happening, right, in that space. It wasn't a nightmare, it was a reality, it was a tragedy. And so um, to consider the way people have access to arms in the United States is a reasonable response to something like this. In fact, what we have seen in the United States is a resistance to looking at the main area wherein there could be transformation to make people safer. The, the number of shootings, killings by guns, deaths by guns in the United States is commensurate with the number of guns that are moving around in the society, right? So we have people who don't, I mean, other other societies, you know, they have guns, they allow guns. It's not like uh, the presence of the gun is what is making it the problem. It's the, the regulations around these guns. And so I think simply for people to have these kind of freakouts around guns is very similar to the way people have these freakouts around freedom of speech as if any type of monitoring about the way people are not um i don't want to say not the government coming in and shutting people down but actually like giving people unregulated license to say and say anything and do anything in public even when we know that 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 type of behavior is going to have a particular effect and so then on the other side of that the fact that we have people like why does somebody need to have a hundred guns why does somebody need to have limitless am ammunition right we already have some regular like, regulations around certain types of you know automatic um, automatic weapons so why not have regulations about um, things that can be added to guns, to semi-automatic weapons, to make them basically automatic weapons, right? It just makes sense. But we get caught up in ideology, and that ideology in the United States is the Constitution. The Constitution becomes this buzzword where if anything threatens this, you know, piece of paper, this set of pages, we suddenly are thrown into a frenzy about how, what, what? Is it that we feel that our humanity is going to somehow be diminished by having these, this particular set of rights question, rights that were conferred upon individuals in this country, not everyone, but certain individuals had these rights conferred upon them. Um, and it was mostly wealthy men who owned land, right? Land that was, you know, how they got that land was questionable, right? So we understand that within this ideology, it was only intended for certain individuals, right? So it's not, it's not perfect. It's not perfection and it wasn't written by perfect people. So why does it become the holy grail in the United States? And, you know, I, again, it becomes about maintaining a certain type of control within a society. So not everyone is protected, but certain individuals are protected. 
certain individuals are protected. The speech of certain individuals are protected, right? The right to certain individuals to have guns is protected, right? Because certainly not everybody is allowed to have a gun. Otherwise, we wouldn't have metal detectors. <laughs> we wouldn't have metal detectors in schools, right? So, um, and where you're allowed to have a gun is limited, right? And if a certain uh, segment of your population is incarcerated, then that po segment of the population isn't allowed to have a firearm. And when people are released from prison, there are certain regulations around them having firearms. So not everyone is allowed to have a firearm, just certain people are allowed to have firearms. And we get so caught up in talking about the Constitution that we forget that it basically is another... It's, an, it's a question of ideology. The, the Constitution is, a, is ideas captured on paper, ideas of specific individuals who had certain values and lacked certain values, had slaves, for example, right? So it's not that those individuals were flawless in their thinking. They were incredibly flawed individuals. So for us to hold on to the, this thinking that they had about what a perfect union would look like is I think as foolish as people adhering to certain religious ideologies or people who are SJWs who are talking about, you know, senselessly policing. You want to talk about PC? What is more politically correct than protecting at all cost the Constitution? It's absolutely ridiculous to think that that is not a regressive action, that that is not regressive thinking to be stuck protecting these certain words because we somehow feel like the protection of those rights is how we're going to what? Hold on to our humanity? It's not. We're not holding on to our humanity. Having, having a gun does not make you a better human being, right? Being able to say whatever comes to your mind does not make you a better human being. So I think we have gotten to a place in our society where we need to start looking at this constitution and maybe thinking about drafting a new set of, 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 of human rights, truly human rights, and moving to the forefront those things that we as a society feel are truly um, our values, or truly, you know, um, truly valuable in a society. And again, having 400 guns, you know, having, let's not exaggerate, let's just say having 30 semi-automatic weapons is not the mark of a free society. I don't think. It's not the mark of a scene. And it's not playing out that way. And I'm sure many of you are going to come on here and you're going to make excuses about, well, people have the right to protect themselves. You don't need 30 guns. You don't need 30 semi-automatic weapons to protect your home. Right? The, the, the statistics don't show that there is such a problem that people are not being set upon routinely by mobs in their homes. And when people were being set upon routinely by mobs, those individuals did not have the right to bear arms. <laughs> those individuals did not have the right to bear arms. Those mobs had arms and those mobs uh, felt fully, uh, fully um, entitled to walk into people's homes and drag them out of their unarmed people's homes and drag them out of them, their homes. And those people did not have the right to protect themselves, right? So having 30 guns, there is no statistic right now that says that 30 guns is going to make you safer than having a single handgun. In fact, the statistics seem to show that the number of guns in households does not lead to the number of armed assailants coming into homes who were stopped from committing crimes. In fact, the statistics seem to show that there are more children and innocent people harmed in gun accidents because of their presence in homes than there are assailants who are stopped from committing crimes in people's homes because there are firearms in those homes. All right. So 
Um, and I'll link to, there's a Los Angeles Times article that talks a little bit about this that I'll link to in the description box below, or I, you know, I'll eventually link to it in the description box below, or you can just, you know, do a, in an internet search and find the information yourselves. Y'all come on. This is not a, like I say, this is not a 101. You can check these, um, stats yourself. I'm not, I'm not firing off so many that it's going to be a hardship on anyone to, to get this information on your own. So yes, yeah, so the question of the Constitution, protecting the Constitution at all cost is something that I think we should begin to evaluate as a society and decide whether or not this Constitution is causing us more problems than it is, um, than it is solving or resolving. Um, that's basically it. Some 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 uh, finer notes is that you know as you respond to these comments, I'm you know open to anything that you have to say. Obviously, I'm going to ask if you do want to throw something out. Just to, if you're throwing out an opinion, you know, try to back up your opinion with some something. I mean, obviously, if it's if you if it's your opinion, it's your opinion. But um, sometimes uh, I find that people make comments, and I'm not going to call people out by name because I've called you out by name in the past about doing this, but do some of your own research. I'm happy to answer basic questions, but uh, something happened last week where someone, you know, asked a, a, a easily, uh, an easily um, answered question by doing a brief internet search and they asked me that question and then some of the rest of you kind of got on them about it and I thank y'all and I you know I appreciate y'all for everything that you do and for being here but I do want you to know like if you do want to respond like do some of your own research please um, as you as I've said uh, already I really don't have as much time as I'd like to have to be able to respond to all of your comments that's it. I appreciate you guys so much. Thanks so much for checking it in. That's it for this video. Like it if you like it. Share, comment, subscribe. This is Reg signing off. Love yourselves. Peace. And I love myself. The world is again.